One year alcohol free for Roseanne today. Congratulations, Roseanne. Thank you, James. Roseanne is uh, one of our very valued alcohol free lifestyle team members who was a former client. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just go back to the beginning. She was a prospect who turned into a client who then turned into an enroller who then turned into a coach. That's right. All in the space of one year, which is pretty amazing, Roseanne. Describe that journey for you. Well, it's been obviously, well, maybe not obviously, it's obvious to me, but it's been one of the best years of my life. Um, quite frankly, in terms of uh, just uh, achievements for me. So obviously best years of your life in terms of children and main events. But, um, you know, we're talking about a year of COVID, right? <laughs> and uh, COVID hit almost just a year ago. And that's what scared the Jesus into me into needing to do something because I knew my life was either going to go in one direction or another. So I had made the decision to quit out of fear, which was pretty easy at, at first. <laughs> and um, then I joined your alcohol free or your 30 day no alcohol challenge. And I was involved with that. And I saw you posting about um, an alcohol free weekend. Uh, what do you do? Is that a summit that you do, James? Yeah. 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 Annual World Summit, yeah. And I said, I said, gosh, I've never had an alcohol-free weekend. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> and so I signed up, and unfortunately it got um, canceled due to COVID, at least the in-person part did, and you did a virtual um, summit. And uh, I was just so impressed that weekend with all the people in there and the positivity and the coaching. I was like, yeah, I want a part of this. So um, is that where you want me to pause so you can ask? Yeah. Me? <laughs> so let's go back further. I want to just give a little bit of context. Maybe um, just describe who you are and where you live and what you did or what you do, um, just so the listener who's not familiar with you kind of knows who we're listening to. And then I've got some some questions I'd like to ask you. No, I think that's a great starting point because knowing where I started is <laughs> really valuable to knowing where I ended up. And um, I uh, had been recently divorced, if you call recently, a couple of years. Um, and uh, just after a 30 year marriage, I uh, had, I had really struggled in my marriage um, and my self-confidence um, in my relationship. Uh, prior to meeting my husband 30 plus years ago. Um, you know, I started my career as a CPA and then I went into um, uh, controller and treasury for a public company, uh, mortgage banking. I, uh, after we, we got sold out because we were part of a venture capital, you know, investment. I did some consulting. I worked for a venture capitalist myself uh, as a, a CFO. And then I was recruited out of there uh, to work for a billionaire <laughs> and manage his family office. So I was a, you know, a pretty good go-getter, so to speak. And I just really enjoyed people. And um, just... I, I, I felt like I could contribute a lot to the places where I was. But over time, <clears throat> when I um, kind of retired early, uh, was taking care of the kids, uh, over time, my confidence really started to um, spiral down as and my drinking spiraled up. And those two didn't work well together. And so I would gotten to a place in my life after my divorce where I just felt like I didn't have any. Um, oh, you might may be able to make me cry, but <laughs> um, I didn't have any value anymore. I just didn't feel like I could contribute anything to the world. And uh, I was just like, my life is over. I gave up my career. I just, yeah. So I was in a pretty bad space uh, and drinking didn't make that any better. 
because I used to drink in the house alone and just uh, uh, kind of drown my sorrows, I suppose, or self-medicate. Yeah. So when you said that you lost your self-confidence and you felt uh, alone, in hindsight, why do you think you felt that way? Like, why do you think you lost confidence? What were the triggers for that? Um, quite frankly, that happened inside my marriage. Um, it was, it was definitely a relationship thing. I didn't have a very healthy relationship with my husband and, um, we didn't have great ways to communicate. And I dealt with that by drinking. Well, we were partiers too. We both drank a lot, but I ended up using alcohol for, absolutely the wrong reasons, uh, stress relief and, um, numbing yourself, loneliness, those kind of things. Those are the things that really got me into the bad habits. Mm. And you said you lost confidence. So what was the confidence that you lost? Because I, I, I can, I can understand if you're having marital issues and you're feeling, down because of that that you described a situation where you just lost confidence in all areas of your life professionally health wise yeah. spiritually yeah okay so let me work backwards then um because let me tell you what i learned in project 90 and then i can trace this back so um and, and this is kind of the only way I can do it because you don't know you're doing anything wrong when you're doing it. And it's only when you take the chance, the opportunity to look at something in a different fashion, do you realize? So I, I, I don't know if I can explain why I, I lost self-confidence, but I can <laughs> explain how I gained it. Does that make sense? <laughs> so in terms of, um, looking back at how I used to manage things, what I learned was that I need to look at situations as facts before I assign an emotion to them. I used to be a um, magnet <laughs> for feeling everybody's pain or discomfort or um anger and I used to internalize it um, as if it was always directed at me and what I learned was that people's reactions are not always because of something I've done it's many times something that's within themselves and so when I can separate myself from somebody else's reaction and use facts, I can respond differently. I used to just take it in <laughs> and react. And um, does that help, James? Yeah, there's, it seems like now that you're you're responding versus reacting. Yes. So the dip, yeah. <laughs> and when you react, so if I take that back, when you react, you look at your reactions and you're like, what's wrong with me? Like, what? why do I do that? Why? Why can't I be... Normal, you know, when you just start reacting to everything, you start feeling like you're going nuts. <laughs> and you're like, why can't I control my emotions? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? So it starts to wear on your self confidence. As it relates to drinking, and especially now that I'm an enrollment coach, I understand this self confidence can be lost. In the, in the conversation that you have with yourself daily about why you can't put an end to something that you know that's not good for you. So in terms of drinking, you're like, well, hey, I wait, I don't feel good today, or that made me tired, or I shouldn't be doing this because it's bad for my health. And you go, okay, I'm not going to do that because I know it's bad for me and I know it's bad for my health. And, you know, I know it's not solving any problems for me. And then you last till, I don't know, five o'clock <laughs> or the next day or in three days 
and then you drink again. And so you're letting yourself down. So that is definitely a part of self-confidence as well. Um, so, yeah. What's an example of when you were reacting back in during that tough time? You know, what's something that maybe your husband said and you would react or maybe someone else said something and you reacted in a certain way? Like, can you give us an example? Oh, of gosh, I can give you a really good example. And it came after my divorce, um, but it was res residual stuff. It was like in a boardroom, too. <laughs> and I, I was dealing with somebody who actually – did have a lot of issues with me, but, and I would react and call people and cry and like, why don't they like me? And, you know, it's just kind of silly stuff now that I look in the rear view mirror. Um, but now I can like go, well, that was his insecurities and I was doing great stuff. And, you know, it's just, it just affected every part of my life, even in the boardroom, eventually, um, just how I, I process responses or instead of having confidence and focusing on the, the point that I wanted to get across, I'd be focused on their reaction towards me, which is irrelevant to the problem at hand, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Did you receive feedback from people in your world that you were reacting, that you were doing something wrong, or was it all just you were internalizing it yourself in private? Um, no, I think um, <clears throat> over the last 10 years, I would receive feedback, especially for my kids. Like in, at home, they're like, Mom, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and and they would say like I don't understand why you're reacting and um sometimes they would I don't know and and retrospect they're like mom's crazy you know <laughs> like it was that bad it was that bad react my reactions um but that grew over time uh mm. there's a lot of personal reasons for that um uh but again it was my lack of ability to process information in a different way and understand that everybody everybody has their stuff to deal with <laughs> and uh to me i just look at things differently where i can recognize that people have their stuff and it's not always about me and if i make a mistake it's like oh well like i can laugh at it now you know i don't have to take it as a mortal battle wound. It's just, I made a mistake. And is that a realization that you've only been able to come to because of the clarity of the past year being alcohol free, or were you coming to that realization towards the end of your drinking? And now it's just been cemented during this alcohol free year. Um, being alcohol free <clears throat> allowed me to get more clarity and less reactions. However, I've also learned skills in the last year that helped me because even though I can have clarity about a situation, it doesn't always mean that I can, I know how to deal with the stress. So identifying is one thing and not react, not not reacting like I used to, but then learning <laughs> a different method to move forward. It's kind of a two-part process. Does that make sense? Remove the alcohol, get clarity, learn more, grow. <laughs> so yeah, but removing the alcohol is necessary as a first step. <laughs> Yeah, what happens, like that That seemed like a three or four step process there, right? It was remove the alcohol was the first step. What was the second one? Uh, okay, move the alcohol, uh, recognize yep. that you can. Get clear or get clear, I think maybe it was get clear yeah. and then recognize and then act differently maybe. I'm not sure what you said, but yeah. The, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that whatever comes after 
get alcohol free doesn't quite work or work as effectively if you're still drinking, right? Uh, the other the other part doesn't even begin to happen in many cases, right? Like it, like it's removing the alcohol, getting clear, like you said, that's the that's a necessary part of this process. I was in counseling for three years and I didn't get any clarity. Well, I didn't, I didn't get any change. I mean, I was, I was relieved. I I did. I I had some PTSD things going on that I, I, that allowed me to change, but you know, I just kept needing to talk to somebody and talk to somebody counseling, 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 but you know, yeah, just, and I was hiding from the counselor that I, that I was really drinking that much. So it, when you're hiding that, it's just a secret. So it doesn't allow you to really make a lot of progress when you have secrets, you know. Did you feel like you were acting in many areas of your life? <clears throat> I I have said before that I felt like a fraud. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I was acting because I felt like I was being me as authentic as I could be, but I had secrets. And when you have secrets, it's, it's mortifying because we, (laughs) it's loneliness. Secrets create loneliness. And um, so, yeah, it's, uh, and then you're lonely. So you drink more. It's just a a vicious cycle actually. (laughs) Hmm. You mentioned your children. How many children do you have? I have four. Okay. How old are they? Oh, dear, James. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to go round to 36, 29, um, 27, and 22. Got it. So... You mentioned before that when you were drinking and you were reacting, they were saying, geez, mom, what's going on? Why are you reacting so much about this? So how has their feedback shifted over the past year when you compare it to whatever feedback you were were receiving for many years leading up to a year ago? As wow, mom, like... (laughs) You're so different. You're so, you know, they see the healthier me. They see the confident me. They see a happy me and they're, they're proud. I mean, they're proud. They're, um, you know, my, I think my oldest son said, um, well, mom, you're such an inspiration, you know, because they, they watched me go through a really horrific divorce. I mean, nobody likes getting divorced, but after 30 years, it's, it's a pretty difficult thing. And they saw me crushed with vodka in hand. Um, and so to see this, you know, this giant change is a big deal. Big, big deal. And what's the change that they say they see in you? I think it's the things that I just shared. It's the confidence. It's the... Um, the clarity is the happiness. I think one of the th- biggest things I recognize, biggest, and you've said it, people in Project 90 have said it, my kids have said it, my friends have said it. I love to hear you laugh. I didn't have a lot of laughter in my life for 30 years. I mean, I did, but not like today. I mean, I just, I have true joy and laughter. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's the biggest thing that I think people resonate with. And that's the biggest thing that gives me confidence because my laughter is not, my laughter is genuine. Um, I'm able to even laugh at myself, which I was never able to do. I mean, it takes confidence to laugh at yourself. And um, I, I prefer to do that because I can't be perfect if I'm always crushing myself when I make a mistake it's just it'll kill you so I'm more accepting of the fact that I I, um, am not perfect and I make light of it 
I, I just did a video on Marco Polo, really long, insightful video. And I go, and that's all my negative feedback for today. <laughs> like, what? Where was that coming from? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I must have killed too many brain cells over the decades. <laughs> like, I don't know, but I, I kept it up there because. I mean, even you've taught me that, James. Like, just go do it. Like, who cares? Like, if you make a mistake, you're more human. Like, yeah. And that's kind of the philosophy I take. Just a slight deviation. I just want to um, get clear on what your health results were as a result of going alcohol-free. More specifically, uh, weight loss, heart rate, blood pressure. Can you just give us a little indication as to what those things were before you enrolled in Project 90 and then, you know, went alcohol-free and what they are today? Well, I will not share my weight with you, but I lost 21 pounds inside of Project 90 and I've kept that all off plus a couple of pounds. Um, I uh, went from borderline to high blood pressure, so well over on a regular basis, the recommended... 140 over 90. I was on a regular basis, like screeching over that and uh, really worried about it and not on medication. So that was dangerous. Um, That changed inside Project 90 to crazy numbers. Um, I mean, I I go and I take my blood pressure every now and then, and it's down 127 to 78, you know, and it's just easy to keep my blood pressure down. I go to the doctor's office and given my age, which I'm not going to say on the broadcast, uh, um, they're just impressed. Like, yeah, I don't really, I don't do medications. Um, I don't um, need blood pressure pills and for my age. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty impressive. So, yeah. So, yeah. So just turning our attention to you being an enroller. So you were enrolled in the process of going alcohol-free. You did your 90 days. You got amazing results. You decided to keep on going. And as of today, as we're recording this, we're celebrating you being one year alcohol-free, which is incredible. Now, over the past, uh, let's say, seven or eight months, you've had an opportunity to enroll other people into our community and more specifically into our Project 90 community, which is 90, I guess you'd call it intense coaching and accountability days, lots of fun. And then there's um, some months on the back end where we give you some support as well. So it's, it, it can be kind of, you know, like a four-month or an ongoing type of, of support program. Um, what did you notice about how you changed when you were now the enroller as opposed to for the months previous to that, you were continuing to be enrolled in this process? What, what did you notice about yourself? How did you grow? How did you shift? I got, um, I guess this gets back to the confidence thing and just, um, being able to inspire others through my journey because I know I was very hungry for, um, you know, those in front of me telling me that they succeeded, you know, as I went through the process. And then you get to this point, and this happens pretty regularly inside Project 90. It's just not me. It's one of the reasons I wanted to work here. It's I'm not the only one that changed. I watched all of these people change with me. I watched all of these people I enroll change. Like, wow. <laughs> like, wow. It's just, um, yeah, I forgot the question. But all I can tell you is the funnest, I, I say this when I do the podcast, is the funnest part of my job is to watch people transform their lives in such a short period of time. It's it's really crazy when when people apply themselves to this and um, you know, and are inspired by being in the community and learning, it, it's just crazy what can happen. When you're on a call. An enrollment call. So just for the benefit of the listener or the viewer, well, 
when people consider enrolling in Project 90, they go through, they have about a 45-minute phone call with someone, including Roseanne. Might be one of our other enrollment team, Russell or John. On rare occasions, it's me. I used to do all of them, but now I have former clients be part of our enrollment team. So when people are applying to be part of our community, they'll, you know, you'll you'll end up talking to Roseanne or someone else. So did you have you heard patterns of what people share with you on those calls? Like what's been an interesting patterns that you've picked up on? Like similar any similar stories, similar backgrounds? What are some of the patterns you've noticed when people share their stories with you? Well the most obvious pattern is that they've made the phone call because they realize this is probably a little bit more to deal with than they thought and that they've probably been trying a few things for a while without success um, on their own. That's bar none, everybody's story. Um, the second pattern is a concern over health. They've gotten to a point where they're, um, they realize that the level of their drinking, they, I always kind of re-reference you, you know, attractively packaged poison. How much of that are you putting in your body? Are, are there any, you know, they realize there's probably not a lot of health benefits in, involved um, in their drinking. So they have a fear of um, their health. A lot of them see a decline in their productivity and at work and in their um, sluggishness, motivation. Uh, yeah, just most, most people will tell me, even if <laughs> I, I always have this thing, like, where do you think you're operating at on a scale of one to 10? And they're like, well, nine. And I go, yeah, okay, that's what your bosses think. Where, where do you think you're operating? And we usually get down to a five or a six. So even a high performer will admit, like, I'm a great performer, but in terms of what I think I'm capable of, it's not all there, you know. Um, most people, 95% uh, of people uh, are struggling with weight even if it's 10 pounds um, and then they struggle more with weight because they're not motivated to exercise. Um, some people can exercise through it and they, they see their slow down, but I'm talking about this is the predominant um, thing. Uh, and many, many people recognize that there's an impact on their relationships, whether it's relationships at work, relationships with a spouse, making time for their children. Yeah. Now I've spoken to you on the phone and on Zoom calls after a certain enrollment calls where someone has chosen not to enroll. And it seems like it takes, uh, on, it seems like on occasion, it takes a heavy toll on you. You've oh. expressed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kills me. <laughs> yeah. Share a little more about that if you will. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't want to cry, um, <laughs> but yeah, I talk to people on the phone and I know they, they could use help and I know that we have an answer for them and um, they decide for whatever reason that the money they have in their bank account or, you know, could get access to or their health or their well-being or all those things I described play a lesser role than the money. And it, it just breaks my heart because I tell people at the end of Project 90, when I talk to people that graduate, and I'm going to start adding this question to my, when I do a podcast interview, how do you feel about the investment? And some people will tell me, if I could have lost the weight alone, I would have paid you 10 times more. Like if you would have told me, if I would have believed what have, could have happened, you could have charged me 10 times more. I would have found the money. And so it's, it, it is so, 
it so affects me to not be able to articulate what's possible for their life. Um, and that, and maybe they don't believe it themselves. Um, I think they believe that the, sometimes I even talk to people that they know this program can help, but they still have some kind of relationship with their finances <laughs> that they can't get the, the cost benefit. And I'm like, you know, most people can pay for it in a year. You've mentioned many a time the productivity increases. Um, there's one person um, that just told me their business went up by, uh, you know, near a hundred thousand in uh, in a short period of time. So, yeah, it's um, it's crazy. I mean, look at me. I was retired, and do, you know, and now I'm working <laughs> and having fun. So. Um, yeah, you just, things happen. And, and the other thing that's very, very difficult for me to articulate or express, I think they see it in me, but they don't maybe have the confidence to believe that they're capable of it, is this joy and this peace. Um, I think I mentioned to you recently, James, I went to the doctor and one of the greatest parts about being alcohol free is going to the doctor and when they go well, how much how many alcoholics drinks do you drink a week and you go none and they're like really I'm like yeah and um and you don't just have to explain it away it's it's a it's a crazy benefit it's and they ask you well do you want to drink I'm like no don't like I'm good and like, oh, your blood pressure is good too. And I, I had um, somebody test my cortisol levels and my adrenaline levels, which are stress related. And those are all normal. Whereas, you know, my stress levels, and this is probably, I didn't mention at the beginning, but most people that call have severe anxiety, um, probably due to the fact that they're not getting as much done as they should, they know they could, they're not having the relationships they could. So, the, you know, we're building up a lot of anxiety and cortisol and adrenaline and not healthy, right? So I went to the doctor and, and these things are all normal. And I'm like sitting there like a peacock going, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good to know that you've done that amount of good to your body, you know, and a doctor recognizes it. So. Mm, yeah. Do you feel like you still take on a lot of the responsibility of someone saying no to joining our community? Do you feel way personally- too much, way too much <laughs> more than I should? Yes, more than I should. I want the magic pill, James. I want the magic secret of getting inside somebody's head and going, really, like, I, I, yeah. It's, I want all the magic words. You know that. I always say, like, what could I have done different? What did I say yeah. different? <laughs> there was one. There was one instance, and we don't want to get into too specifics uh, to protect the privacy of those concerned. But there was a there was a family abroad, wasn't there? There was a mother and a daughter, and there was uh, the uh, um, and the daughter wanted to get in, and there was a relationship with her mother. Like maybe you could just share as much as you can share. Obviously, we're not going to name anyone, but. Just why did that, just maybe you can relay that story and why you feel that impacted you so much. Um, that was a situation where um, uh, I had uh, I had the husband and wife on the phone and, um, um, you know, they were being really honest, actually honest for the first time with each other about the effects of drinking. Um, they had a they had a child. Um, it was the husband's stepchild. And the husband had told me, you know, this child of mine in this marriage has lost her father to alcoholism. I don't want her to lose her mother. And so we had talked about um, the program and the finances and um, she really wanted in. And I had told her to, um, to share it with, she said, I think I can get the um, money from my mother. 
And I encouraged her to go do that. And she, well, she said to me, you know, my mother doesn't um, know I drink or doesn't understand this. And I just said, well, you know, we don't want her to know because you're in the hospital or, um, you know, something's happened to you. So it's probably good. But anyway, she told her mother and her mother was devastated and she was devastated. And so it devastated me. <laughs> it's like, you know, I just get really emotionally involved in all these stories. But, um, you know, as, as I could reflect back, that was a good thing to, she had just shared with me how, as devastating as it was, she had shared with me after that it was really good that she had never had such an open uh, conversation with her husband and that she recognized that getting the secret out to her mother was important too. So yeah, that's, I get, I do get emotionally involved. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it happens. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Just, it's a year today that you've been alcohol free. So if we take if we wind the clock back thirteen months, let's say a month more than now, uh, than a, than a year, thirteen mm-hmm. months ago, could if someone came down, if an angel came down, and tapped you on the shoulders and said, you know, in thirteen months you'll be in, enrolling all these people into a program that helps them get clear and change their relationships and lower their blood pressure and get healthy, and you'll be saving people's lives, and you'll be affecting dozens if not hundreds of people in a positive way, would would you have believed that angel? I might have. No, I might have thought that angel was a hallucination. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that would have been impossible. Yeah. And that's what I try and, you know, articulate to people. I can only articulate through my own personal story, which is why I like talking to people because I can represent to them like, no, this, this is the truth. This is what happened to me. This is what's possible. And um, I was telling somebody today, (laughs) I am an open book, right? And so somebody will come on, we have a a platform that we talk to each other on Marco Polo, and I can always one up everybody. I started drinking when I was 16. Uh, I started when I was 13. You know, I used to drink this amount. And I'm like, yeah, I can do that too. Plus I added maybe a couple of glasses of wine. You know, it's just, usually people can't top my <laughs> my stories about doing embarrassing things or regret, having regrets. I can always generally empathize with somebody else's plight with respect to drinking i feel like yeah i have a lot of wisdom is what i like to call it wisdom. yeah isn't it funny how our lives can take such interesting turns that we we never possibly could have fathomed before i mean imagine just going to to show and tell at school you know if you're a little seven-year-old girl say when i grow up i want to be a fire person or i want to be an astronaut or i want to be imagine going there and saying when i grow up no. I want to help adults <laughs> to quit drinking right, and change right. their lives. It just seems so preposterous, doesn't it? But yet here you are, not only have you transformed your own life, but you have transformed dozens of pe- of people, of people's lives, and not just those people, but the people in their lives because it's not just them who are being influenced and transformed. It's their children. It's their colleagues. It's their bosses. It's their friends. It's their acquaintances. They're all being transformed because of the, their transformation. Yeah, I just read somewhere in a book recently that the power of one positive or negative change and the ripple effect that that can have, like throughout the world, if you think about it, you know, like one tiny thing, like you just said, one one life. And I may, you know, I don't know what my kids will do with it now, but you know, who knows what they'll feel about it in the future. But, you know, like you said, I'm, I know I'm, I'm having, you know, some influence or at least I can, I, I, I give people hope, like, here's what it looks like a few months down the road. Here's what I felt like during months four to six. And they're like, Oh, okay. Okay. You know, and like you said, their families are being changed or children have better lives they have more clarity they're operating better at work they're providing better customer service 
Um, we talked, I talked to, um, well, especially real estate people. I was, you like the real estate stories too, because it's, it's very trackable, right? Um, people can say like more clarity, think better, more energy. So that means I can choose a client wisely. I can, you know what I mean? There are clients that suck your time and suck up your time. And there are clients that are very positive to work. So they, they choose the right clients to work with. They're more efficient. They're enjoying their jobs better, which means they're getting more business. Everybody wants to work with a happy person, right? And if I just look at me, like, wah, 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 like sitting on the couch drinking versus out there, like, you know, laughing, that's positive energy. And everybody wants to be around people with positive energy. And that's what I've noticed. That's just given me confidence, right? It's like, oh, here was this person. Hey, I think they like me. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but for me, it was, I came from such a low place. It was, yeah, that is a statement I actually used to make or do make like, oh, they like me. <laughs> So just uh, just a couple of final questions here. Uh, what's dating life like now yeah. that you're alcohol free? We're not allowed to reveal your age, of course. <laughs> uh, but I'm just curious, what's dating? What's after a 30 year marriage and get, getting back out there, and getting back out there being alcohol free? What's that been like? That has been really weird. Um, first of all, having more confidence gives me more more decision-making power and knowing what I want and what I don't want and not settling, which is good. I, I Having more confidence means that I'm more happy with where I am and what I'm doing. Um, and so that can define the types of people I meet. But uh, I don't know, recently I had my first date. <laughs> it wasn't my first date, no, second date. I don't date as much. One, because of COVID. Two, I live in Yuma. <laughs> and so, um, but I have had two dates. One was a, a man who drank, drank more than, I don't mind somebody that drinks. I prefer to have a drinking partner that can have a drink here and there and, you know, not have it be a big deal. It's, you know, it's not a big deal for me. But he ended up on our dates drinking, you know, three and four drinks a night and every night, every time I saw him. So that really wasn't a good match. But then I, uh, I dated somebody who unfortunately I found out was still married. <laughs> so that didn't last long, but for the short period, it did last. Um, it was cool because he liked the fact that I didn't drink. It took like, instead of drinking and getting the buzz and, like doing physical things that you don't really shouldn't do until you know somebody better. It's like six dates. And then we had our first kiss and it was like, Oh, I, I, maybe that's too much information, but it is when you drink since you're 13, you don't know what it's like to go on a date without alcohol. And I had to figure that out. It's like a, it's a different thing, but I liked it because it was, it was conscious decisions and thought processes. And like you said, clarity about decisions and not regret about what did I do? What did I say? Um, or just getting physically involved for the wrong reasons, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's good. And it's a positive outlook. Wonderful. Well, Roseanne, thank you so much for sharing your story, your one-year alcohol-free journey, is there anything in particular that you feel people should know about stepping into the unknown of living an alcohol-free life? Now, you just to be clear, you've chosen to remain alcohol-free for a year. It doesn't mean that everyone needs to quit forever. It doesn't mean that everyone needs to quit for a year either. People have different desires or intentions around their, their drinking it seems like living an alcohol-free lifestyle is working very effectively for you. But is there some kind of lasting overall message that you feel someone who's pondering this lifestyle should hear that might inspire them to take action? Yeah, I, 
I think that's a good question, James. Um, a lot of people as an enrollment coach and even my own story, I had no idea what 90 days looked like alcohol free. And I had no intention really, or I couldn't even comprehend stopping for any length of time beyond 90. I just like, what does it look at 90? Right. And at 90, I, the gains were so great. And that's why I like the 90 day um, thing, but you can look back and you're like, well, you know, what are the gains here? I mean, a lot of people, they can't, they still can't imagine a life without drinking, but are you willing to look at the next 90? Hell yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, there's a process and then you just keep, and I think James, you're the physical specimen of not drinking for a long period of time, right? You're, you're healthy and um, happy and successful. And, you know, so the more you gain the, the and the more you reflect on why you wanted to quit, that's the thing, the complacency and forgetting about where you were to me, that's for me, but um, it's just worth trying. Right? <laughs> just see how you feel at 90 days is what I say. I don't think you get it at 30. I think you get a lot at 30, um, but I think you get a lot more at 60 and a lot more at 90, I, I guess is what I can say. So give it a shot, 30 days at a time. Yeah, thank you. And if you'd like to speak with Roseanne, then you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule and you can book a call. Uh, it will be with Roseanne or it might be with one of our other, <clears throat> excuse me, enrollment team members uh, John or Roseanne or, um, sorry, your Roseanne, John or Russell, I should say, uh, or David. Uh, or if you're on a mobile phone in the US, uh, if you text me at the number 44222 and you just send me the word Project 90, uh, that's P-R-O-J-E-C-T-9-0, I'll text you back a link to the schedule to the calendar and uh, you can just book a time and you might get an opportunity to speak with Roseanne uh, directly or one of our other enrollment team members. Roseanne, congratulations again. Uh, on a personal note, thank you so much for being such a positive influence in our community. Thank you for inspiring people to take action. And then once they've taken action and they're inside of our community, thank you for always supporting people sometimes people get a little wobbly along the way and they have a bit of self-doubt or some things come up but you're always one of the first if not the first people to get in there and really support them encourage them to lean back into the community so thank you for taking a stand or making a stand for people's progress and for people's lives because you sure. you truly are an inspiration to sure. them and especially to me as the as the owner and founder of the business i appreciate you so much yeah, well, it's definitely uh, a rewarding thing that I have engaged in, so I enjoy it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One. 
or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop computer? Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.